Plus, Paul Schaefer, and the CBS Orchestra. And now, disgraced public servant, Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Folks, have a good St. Patrick's Day. Yeah! A, lot of, a, lot, a lot of people get drunk. Do you folks get drunk on St. Patrick's Day? Yeah! I, uh, I think maybe I had a little too much to drink yesterday. <laughs> I don't remember what happened exactly, but I woke up this morning between former Governor Jim McGreevy and his wife. <laughs> yeah, ooh, hello. It just gets stranger and stranger, doesn't it? We had the, uh, the former governor, uh, Jim McGreevy, uh, who announced one day that he, he was uh, not going to be uh, married anymore because uh, he in, uh, liked kissing boys. <laughs> and uh, so that's right. I, I, I don't mean boys. I mean <laughs> men. Uh, so anyway, they said, OK, you, you don't have to be governor anymore. And, and then now it turns out that he and his, his wife and, and another guy were having a, th a three-way sexual act, three-way, and, uh, and, I, and, I, and I read that and I said to myself, I, I can't even handle a three-way bulb. <laughs> and now, and now on Monday, right after being sworn in, uh, the new governor, the new governor of New York, David Patterson, he announces that he cheated on his wife. And I'm thinking, this guy didn't waste any time, did he? I mean, <laughs> my God! What the? And, and now, and not a minute too soon, there's a quiz that you can take to tell if your spouse is cheating. Huh? <laughs> Question number one. Is your spouse a governor? <laughs> That's right. But it's uh, gotten crazy. The only politician in uh, New York City who's not having extramarital sex is Ulysses S. Grant. Thank you very much. I was going to say. And it's <laughs> not for a lack of trying. Oh. Uh, Vice President Dick Cheney, you know where he is right now? He's in Baghdad. He visited there, and while he was uh, in Iraq, he said that it's a successful endeavor. Uh, at, at least I think that's what he said. It was hard to hear over the explosions. Yeah. But. Uh, <laughs> How about the economy? You folks jittery about the economy? Yeah. And the, the stock market, one day, good boom, the next day, whoa -ho, and it's crazy, isn't it? George Bush, earlier today, uh, reassured the country about the economy, and he said, I'm on top of it. <laughs> George W. Bush, our president, said, I'm on top of it, and I said to myself, well, that's good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> that's all you need. There was one bit of good news for the economy uh, earlier today. Uh, at, at the last minute, a large investment bank was rescued. At the last minute, it was adopted by Angelina Jolie. So that's, <laughs> that's been... There's a policy. Thank you very much, Paul. I, uh, I want to thank everybody who sent in, I've uh, got thousands and thousands of emails and postcards from concerned citizens around the country. Uh, yesterday, about this time, just about 24 hours ago, I had a, uh, mm, I had a, uh, ah. uh, huh? 
I had, a, I had a large, uh, and by the way, I thought it was uh, too early, but it's not too early. Start checking yourselves because yesterday, 24 hours ago, about this big, I had a tick pulled out of my back. You Honest did. to God. You did. Right up here in my uh, the dressing room and uh, our uh, makeup artist, Michelle O'Callaghan. Yes. And she pointed out that it was uh, nice for St. Patrick's Day. Sure. <laughs> O'Callaghan pulls a tick out. We do it every year. Uh -huh. um, and, and, but here was the drama. Only part of the tick was removed. Yes. At, yes, and I had to do the show last night with the living head of a tick <laughs> in my flesh. Yes. In my flesh. In my flesh. That is in my it. pants. Uh, and, and then immediately following the uh, telecast last night, uh, uh, Dr. Lou Aroni, my personal physician, raced right over here and with the aid of precision medical instruments was able to carve out the remaining bits of that living tick head. <sighs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, the watch is on. We'll just wait and see. Do I have tick fever? <laughs> Do I not have tick fever? You'll be the first to know. Okay. Sure. But right now, I must say, I... oh, there he goes. <laughs> have it again. It has happening again. <laughs> right now, I feel pretty good. Okay, that's that's good. But hey, check. I mean, my God. Check for those ticks. How ironic that you have been saying well, this since we went on the air. It, it's March, for God's sakes, and I'm pulling ticks out of my Take back. Take your clothes off and yeah. check yourself head to toe for ticks. Uh, and I, tell I, us I, this. I, 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 hey, I didn't even think to look on my back, because normally when you're yeah. checking for ticks, you've got to stand over a mirror. And I, I didn't do that. Uh, oh, the other thing is tax time. You folks know you got to pay your taxes or you're going to prison. They're not kidding around. You got to pay those taxes. Yes, Have you sir. seen the new? Here's the New York State tax form. I was looking at it. This is, I don't know, is this a joke? What is this? Take a look. Can you see this? It's a standard uh, New York City, uh, New York State tax income thing form. Yes. And you get them in and then, can you go down there, just tilt down to like item number five? Can you see it right there? Look at that. Item number five income earned by having <laughs> sex with the governor. It's on the form. I mean, who would ever guess that the governor of the state of the great state of New York, the Empire State, who would ever guess that he was having sex with hoes? <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, what is today's secret ingredient? Today's secret ingredient is... deal on that guy. Ever seen anybody get that excited about spinach? Other than, well, perhaps Popeye. Now listen, um, uh, John McCain, uh, John McCain is already campaigning. You know where he is now? He's in Iraq right now. And uh, people think that this is a calculated move to kind of I improve his international profile. Yeah. Because m maybe uh, foreign affairs is not his strong suit. I see. Uh, well, there's already been some response about uh, John McCain in Iraq. Ah. And you won't believe who's talking about Who it. Who is it? Well, take a look. Uh. Al-Qaeda denounces the visit to Iraq by the evil crusader John McCain. Also, McCain is so old, when he was in school, there was no history class. McCain is so old, he took his driver's test on a dinosaur. McCain is so old, his social security number is one. Yes. Uh, Everybody. You gotta, they say you got to watch out for that bullseye rash. The bullseye rash. That's what yeah, you, when you get the Lyme tick fever, deer, deer tick fever, Lyme disease. Yeah. Then other people say you'll never get the bullseye rash. Like one in a million people get the bullseye rash. Here's the tricky part about the Lyme tick fever. It may be asymptomatic. I may live the rest of my life with no symptoms and actually have the disease. I've had it, yeah. You understand the kind of pressure that puts on a man? Be a shame. Yeah, I feel fine, but I think I have it. It reminds me of the time uh, my mom, uh, she came out and we had a picnic or something, we couldn't find her. The next morning we found her in the, in the yard and a, a deer, uh, she was sleeping and a deer had uh, licked, he was drinking margaritas, had licked the salt. And, and we thought for sure she had the tick fever. Uh, I don't think we've ever done this before. This is an excellent segment and you folks uh, thank your lucky stars you're here tonight. It's time for the Barack Obama uh count. Let me, uh, now let me repeat that. 
Barack Obama, uh, count. All right. Are you ready? Yep. Here we go. All those things uh, override uh, a guilt by association. Uh, 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 some of these issues uh, to talk more fully about uh, 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 with full documentation that uh, there's nothing I think there's no doubt that uh, 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 it has been in the past uh, uh, yeah, he makes a good point All right, time now for a little something we call Great Moments in Presidential Speeches. Take a look at this. This nation will remain a neutral nation, but I cannot ask that every American remain neutral in thought. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Um, we, uh, first of all, I, there is, uh, the, uh... That's exactly what we're talking about. On the show tonight, the Cribs, ladies and gentlemen. And, uh, this, uh, CD is in the uh, Giant Super CD format, so make sure you have a Giant Super CD player at home. This won't fit your standard CD player. Mm. Uh, also, oh, there's a wonderful show. You folks familiar with the program called The Hills on MTV? Yes. Uh, yes. It's um, more than a show for me. It's kind of like my guide to life. It is, really. I didn't know you were a Hillsaholic. It, it's a fantastic program, uh, and one of the stars of the program, Lauren Conrad, is Whoa. joining us this evening. A lovely young woman. And our good friend, Al Franken. We'll be right back with tonight's Top Ten. As Thank you. When I um, get a lot of mail, a lot of emails, a lot of postcards about this issue also, uh, when you see me stand up at home, uh, please do the same and stand as well. <laughs> and then when I have a seat, go ahead, feel free to be seated. <laughs> it'll, it'll give you a feeling uh, of immediacy and a connection to the show, and, and, a, and a solid connection to the show. Uh, tonight, uh, boys and girls, we're playing What's in the Soup. Here we go. What's in the Soup? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's in the Soup? Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, uh, uh, do me a favor. Turn on the uh, camera out there on 53rd Street. There we go. It's a late winter, early spring afternoon here in beautiful Manhattan, Midtown, the theater district. Look at all of these people, ladies and gentlemen. They did not pass the audience member profile, so they have to stand out there and hoot like idiots. Let's go inside and say hello to our good friend, Rupert. Hey, Rupert. Hi, Dave. How are you? Tonight, Rupert, we're playing What's in the Soup, and, uh, okay, Paul. Okay, fine. Thank you. Uh, we need a contestant. I just wonder, do people, uh, ever call you Roop? You ever get that Roop? Some of them do. Kind of short for Rupert? Yeah. Do you, do you mind being called Roop? No, no. Really? Do you prefer, do you prefer Rupert or do you prefer Roop? Uh, I wouldn't care either way. You don't care either way? <laughs> Would it be okay with you if I call you Roop? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, Roop, do me a favor. Okay, Dave. Go outside, get us a contestant for What's in the Soup. Here we go. What's in the Soup? Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What's in the Soup? Roop. That rhymes. Now, Alan, uh, tell us tonight, uh, what are we playing for, Alan? Hi, I'm Alan Carter, TV's gay chef. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> and Dave, inside yeah. the soup is a clock radio. A no clock radio. Okay. And what are we playing for? We're playing for a blender. Oh, a blender, that'd be nice. Thank okay. You. Now, I don't, I don't want to monkey wrench this, but if there's a clock radio in the soup, why don't we let them keep the clock radio as well? It's your show. 
I didn't like the sound of that. So they have to they have to figure out what's in the soup by reaching in for it. Is that how this works? That's how we're going to play. Oh, okay, thank you. Let's go back inside to Rupert's Hello Deli. Uh, uh, Rupert, you got a contestant there? Yes. Hi, what is your name, sir? Hey, I'm Brantley. I'm sorry? Brantley. Where are you from, Brantley? Uh, Dallas, Texas. Oh, good. Welcome to uh, New York. Boy, how about that uh, Dallas uh, Giants uh, playoff game? Uh, <laughs> I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I'm glad you're in town, and uh, welcome to uh, What's in the Soup. We got a, uh, a, big, a, big, a big vat of soup there. You got it there? Oh, my <laughs> ride is here. <laughs> now, here's how we play. We're going to put a blindfold on you and then take you outside and let the cops put you in a squad car. <laughs> And then you reach inside. You have 30 seconds to guess what's in the soup. All right, go ahead and blindfold him there. I'm going to reach into this? Oh, wait, yeah, we got to blindfold you first. And then we're just going to play uh, what's in the soup. Uh, it's Brantley. <laughs> and uh, put up the 30-second clock because we're about ready to go here. Anytime you're ready, Brantley, reach right in there. Right, here we ready? go. All right, start the clock. Playing what's in the soup. Ow! Ow! Dude, what's the matter? It's really hot. What, what, what the happened? Hell? What, what do you mean? <laughs> Rupert, what did you do? That's not funny. What, Rupert? It's in my are eye? You, are you all right? No. Br what's the you, matter, I'm Brantley? Gonna, I'm going to sue you. Now, wait a minute. This That's is stupid. OK. Well, he lost his chance at a blender. <laughs> Next time he's looking to make margaritas, he'll be sorry he walked out on What's in the Soup? What's in the Soup? Is that it? Well, I see it does. it's your uh -huh. show. Uh, yeah, it is my show. <laughs> we'll, we'll be right back with tonight's Top Ten list. Coming up next, Top Ten Signs, Your Monkey is Too Fat, and Al Franken. If you miss this, you'll never forgive yourself. from the Dallas, Texas, missing an opportunity to win a free blender. Yeah. And I was, I was so stunned by the occurrences that I forgot that uh, there are no losers on what's in the soup. What do we have for him, girls? Oh, look, it's a beautiful Hello Deli Deli platter. Thank you very much. Rupert, is the, uh, is the item still in the uh, soup? Yeah, it is. Yeah, pull it out. Let's have a look at it. Let's see what it is. That's nice. Yeah, that'll, clean up, that'll clean up good. <laughs> so it's a win-win. You save the radio, you save the soup. <laughs> yeah. yeah. OK, thanks, Roop. Well, You're welcome, Dave. Ladies and gentlemen, here's tonight's top 10 list. Let's go. The category, and it's an odd one, top 10 signs your monkey is too fat. Do we have monkey owners in the audience? <laughs> Listen to this, an Associated Press story today, oh yeah, the horn section, uh, reports many zoos are hiring nutritionists and dietitians because their animals have become too fat and lethargic. Mm, mm. You know, so I, think, I think, sadly, it could be the American lifestyle. Yeah, that's right. Because <laughs> we're, we're battling obesity now in, in all forms of American culture. Yes. It's kind of sad. Well, the, the category, top ten signs, your monkey is too monkey fat. Is yeah, too yeah, monkey is monkey too fat. Too monkey is monkey too fat. Your monkey monkeys. is too fat. Yes, monkey <laughs> Uh, number 10, tried to swing from a vine and brought the, down the entire tree, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, number nine, only eats bananas smothered in nacho cheese and butter. Mmm. <laughs> like lunch at uh, Graceland, wasn't it? Uh, number eight, when wearing a baseball cap is often mistaken for Michael Moore. Michael Moore. <laughs> mistaken for Michael Moore. Uh, number seven, he knows 26 words, all of them Baskin Robbins flavors. Number six, <laughs> last Halloween put on a pair of earrings and went as Kirstie Alley. What? Uh. Ouch. Ouch. Oh, ouch, yes. Ouch. Oh, it goes back. At number five, the kids keep yelling, there's a hippo in the monkey house. <laughs> there's a hippo in the monkey house. Da -da 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 -da. There's a hippo in the monkey house. Da -da 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 -da. There's 
Yeah, it's it's raining monkey. hippos in the monkey house. Uh, uh, number four, yeah, can no longer get around to solve crimes with his obsessive compulsive behavior. Sorry, that's a sign Monk is too fat, which new episodes of Monk on the U.S. network this summer. Watch new episodes of Monk. Yeah. Uh, number three, at department stores, has to shop in the husky monkey section. Number two, he's used as the before picture in all those monkey diet pill ads. And the number one sign your monkey is too fat, Bill Clinton just hit that. What? Monkey's, <laughs> monkey's too fat. Hey, our first guest is a, a very smart, uh, very funny man who is currently uh, running for the United States Senate. Isn't that amazing, ladies and gentlemen? From the great state of Minnesota, please welcome Al Franken. Al. I just noticed something. Uh, your uh, grip when you shake hands is so much stronger than it used to be, and I think I know why. I've been shaking a lot of hands. You've shaking a lot, a lot of, of hands, yeah. Dave, before, before we start, sure, I just want to yeah, clear something right up. Yeah, I wish you would. Uh, last time I was on the show, right. I made a distinction, which is that uh, in, in our careers, in, 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 in the humor business, mm -hmm. that, that I uh, had been a satirist. Satirist? And, and you a, uh, a clown. Clown, yes. And... Uh, and and I saw this on the repeat, and it, it uh, I, what I was worried is, is that you might have gotten the suggestion that I uh, was was saying that what I had done in my career, career as uh, uh, doing satire right. was more important than um, you know what what you do clowning. <laughs> and well, you know, uh, it did it did kind of cross my mind when you yeah, said I'm sorry it. Sorry about that. Yeah. Nothing could be further oh, thank from goodness. the truth. I'm there, glad uh, to hear we that. need the clown. Uh -huh. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we need. <laughs> yeah. We need yeah. Clown. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we need laughter, and mm -hmm. even though you know the kind of laughter uh, that I would provoke would sure. also provoke thought. Right. Uh, <laughs> it's it's no more important than the, the kind of mindless laughter right. that that you provoke. And I just want to get that. Okay, good. Good. Because I didn't want anything misunderstood yeah, yeah. the last time. Now, yeah. what I'm, what I'm doing now, I public do. service uh -huh. is is much more important than what <laughs> yes, you do. Yes, of course. Yes. <laughs> helping I don't. People I don't think there's any confusion healthier. on that point. Yes, uh, Al. Yeah. Now, uh, speaking of that, is there anything we need to know about you and escort services before we go on here? Um. Let me just say this. Yeah. Uh, I thought Elliot Spitzer showed uh, very bad judgment. <laughs> in, in his uh, soliciting of, and use of uh, prostitutes? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and it's yeah. the kind of bad judgment that you right. don't want from your elected officials. No. And I promise not to indulge in any judgment that, that bad. That bad, yeah. That bad. yeah. yeah. And no, no, that's all you have to say? Nothing? That's that, I'll leave it at that. All but right, that fair was enough, very, fair very poor judgment. Now, you've, uh, you've been campaigning for a, a full year. I Over think. a year now. Oh, my goodness. How, how is it going? It must, first Tremendous of all... fun. Must, it was fun. It must be exhausting. Uh, you know, fortunately, I have my uh, wife is, uh, and mm -hmm. my daughter are Your also... Your wife's name is... Uh, Franny. Franny. And Fran uh, people... It, she's my secret weapon. Mm. People in Minnesota love Franny. In fact... I've, I've had to start inserting something in my speech. Was a lot of people like Franny more than me. <laughs> and so I've just had to say to people, look, it's fine right. to like Franny more than me. I understand that. Just, you just don't have to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I, I'm, I'm the candidate. It's good to keep my morale, morale up. <laughs> yeah. it's, very, it's just gratuitous, uh -huh. is what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> she, she's great, uh -huh. yeah. And so my daughter's... Doing it too, Your daughter is too. also campaigning, yeah, so yeah. it's a kind of a family pursuit. Absolutely. Then, isn't it? And and how does it look? What are your prospects? Where I mean, this uh, to me is a is a wonderful thing, not only about you but about America. And what are your prospects now for getting the, the nomination from your party? Uh, they're very good. My sort of my chief rival dropped out for the for the nomination, but I still have a, a process to go. And there's another mm -hmm. uh, gentleman in who I like very why, much. Why did the guy drop out? 
Uh, I think he felt that he was. Horrors? Uh, <laughs> Just a guess? <laughs> I know you can't come. <laughs> I, I, I really don't know, but I don't think I, I don't think so. He, don't he think wasn't. So. Uh, I don't think he was. He was uh, progressing the way he wanted mm -hmm. to, and and I think I'm. I'll I'll be the nominee, mm -hmm. and I have a very good chance. Yeah, good. I um, I'm quite sure of that. And I have uh, an excellent chance against uh, Norm Coleman, the the incumbent, partly because of the tremendous energy. But there is there's a new progressive majority that's emerging in this country, and you're seeing it all over the country, uh, and not just in Minnesota where we had record turnout, but all over the country, two or three times as many Democrats turning out as Republicans, and we know what we want. We want universal health care. We want an economy that works for everybody. Right. We want a green economy that creates jobs. We want. Uh, we want a world-class education for all our kids, and we want to restore our standing in the world. Mm -hmm. And that means getting out of Iraq. And that well, means getting out of Iraq, but putting more thought and planning yeah. into how we get out than we put in to how we went in, which is a low bar, right. but still, that's what we need but to see, do. See, now, I agree with you. I think that everything you outlined there is certainly exactly what we want, but they virtually all of them seem like they might be unattainable. Am, am I too pessimistic here? Yes. Mm. <laughs> No, we need leadership. We need new leadership that's going to stand up to special interests and stand up for working people and tell the truth yeah. and uh, fight for people who feel I haven't had a voice, and I'm, I plan to be that kind of leader. All right, good for you. And, and as the... Uh, do... One of the things that I like about your campaign is the idea that a smart guy, knowledgeable guy, but also one of the funniest people I know. Now, that, that must work in, does that work in your favor as a candidate, that know, knowing that you're funny? Um, yeah, I think so. I, 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 don't, I don't think, look, people take my campaign seriously. We've, we've put a serious organization together. We have over 90,000 donors to the campaign. Uh, the average campaign, the most common campaign is 25 bucks. Uh, we have, I have the endorsement of uh, 14 unions representing over 250,000 members. Uh, we put together a very serious campaign, but I have to be myself. Mm -hmm. So, no, I, it's, it, it, it's helpful to yeah. be funny. Funny is a good thing. And, and you, do you, are you confident that you will get the clown vote? Look, it's Al Franken. We'll be right back, everybody. Uh, Al Franken is here. Now, tell us, uh, what kind of a campaign are you running up there in uh, Minnesota? And, and I, I'm excited also because, you know, I'm from Indiana. Right. And uh, Minnesota, Minnesota might as well be Indiana and vice versa. Yeah. Uh, what kind of campaign are you running there? Well, I'm going all over the state. I'm right. showing up everywhere. A clean campaign? Dirty? What do you do? Dirty, doing? very dirty campaign. No, no, we're, <laughs> we're a very positive campaign. Yeah. Do you have, uh, like, commercials on TV and stuff? We do. In fact, we had one commercial really caught on. It was with my fourth grade teacher, Mrs. Moline. She wrote me a letter uh, saying, uh, Dear Mr. Franken, when I read that an Al Franken was running for the Senate, mm -hmm. I thought you might be the Alan Franken. Oh that I taught in fourth grade, mm -hmm. and it wouldn't surprise me because you're always a very good student. Oh, that's nice. And she sent me a check for 25 bucks. Wow. And I called her up, and we talked about all the teachers. Uh, I, she, mm -hmm. You remember me? I said, of course I do. You're a great teacher. And she, uh, uh, I asked her to do a commercial for me. Great. And I think we, we have it here. Do you mind if we take yeah, a look at it? Yeah, I think a little... Okay, so it's it? the sure. self-explanatory when we see it? I, I all right. So. It's an Al Franken uh, Senate <laughs> campaign ad. <laughs> I got this letter from Mrs. Moline. She wanted to help with the campaign, so I asked her to be in a TV ad. A TV ad? Okay, here we go. Alan was a hard worker, and he went on to graduate from Harvard. He was funny, too. I guess that's why he became a comedian. I was really more of a satirist. Okay, Alan. Thanks, Mrs. Moline. You're welcome, Alan. I'm Al Lynn Franken, and I approve this message. That's very nice. She seems like a great woman. You know, one of, the, one of the great things that's come out of this campaign is that a number of her former students have contacted her through our office 
and she sent me uh, a couple weeks ago an incredible email back that she had, and I'm paraphrasing it, but she got one from a former student that said, uh, Dear Mrs. Moline, you were my favorite teacher. And uh, I was not a good student in fourth grade. There was, my parents were getting divorced and um, there was trouble in my home. Also, spelling was kind of hard in your, your grade. But you saw that uh, I liked art and you did art projects with me and I'll never forget your uh, staying after school and doing, uh, painting a window with me. And you made me feel special. And then she put in parentheses, loved. And she said, now I'm an elementary school teacher myself and I teach special ed kids and I try to make each of them feel the same way you made me feel. Oh boy, what an endorsement that is for everything. And that's just great. Uh, what, I, what I loved about that is we, I haven't met a teacher in, in Minnesota who doesn't, isn't in favor of accountability, but I haven't met one that likes No Child Left Behind. And the way No Child Left Behind is working is that it's narrowing education so much that Mrs. Moline and also the class sizes are so small. We had about 24 kids in those days. Now they have like 35. And I don't know if Mrs. Moline could have taken time away from teaching to the test to do art projects with this girl and use her professional judgment to do that. And I just, uh, you know, really want to be an advocate for getting our kids back on track in, in, in school. Well, it sounds like you've got a tremendous advantage here. You have that l lovely woman there, your yep. teacher, uh, your wife, a lovely woman, and your daughter, a lovely woman, all supporting you in the great state of Minnesota. You can't go wrong, my friend. Good to Thank see you. Thank you, David. Al Franken, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back with Lauren Conrad. Wednesday on The Late Show, Dave is joined by Brooke Shields from SNL, Seth Meyers, music from the Gunner Twins, and a special top ten presented by the cast of Battlestar Galactica. Somebody call Guinness. This is one for the record books. We'll be right back. Here we go, let's all sit down. Our next guest star is on the very popular MTV uh, reality program called The Hills. Please welcome the lovely Lauren Conrad, ladies and gentlemen. Beautiful, good Thank heavens, you. that's lovely. Is that, I mean, why I did, uh, why, uh, <laughs> I, 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 you must be going out after this, is that right? Um, yeah, I am. Oh. <laughs> See, for a second there, I thought it was for me. Well, no, it was, but then I figured I got dressed up. So. Yeah, well, you, you did, you did that, you did get dressed up. <laughs> Uh, welcome to the uh, program. Uh, you're originally from California, right? I am. I'm yeah. from Orange County. Orange County. And you were on the Orange County show. There was an Laguna Hill. I was on Laguna Beach. Yeah, yeah. And then you, you <laughs> went to the to the hills, right? I, went, I moved to L.A., yeah. and um, now we're on a show called The Hills. And, and you, you ever had ticks when you were a kid? <laughs> did they, they told you to? Yeah, yeah. I did. <laughs> really? Now, where did you get ticks? I, I mean, what, what, in, in, or, in California you caught them? Yeah, in yeah. Um, Orange County, our, our house the back was a huge canyon and I was a really big tomboy when mm -hmm. I was little so I'd always go hiking and I had like a rock collection and yep. I would just but I would always come back up and you get ticks. Sure you get ticks. Yeah but they're it, gross. When, huh? Yeah but the, I don't think I don't think in California they don't have the the, the the deadly deer tick lime fever. I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> so what kind of what kind of ticks were they pulling off of you? I, I don't know they're like the little black tick it's pretty gross. Yeah. yeah. Where, you know, when they were pulled off, were they engorged? Were they full of blood? No, I think we got them pretty quick. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My they, mom would usually just do a check when I would come back. You have to. No, I'm not no, kidding you really about that. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I'm so dumb, I didn't know that it started this early. It's March, for heaven's sakes. I th tick season began. Where did uh, you get a tick? Where did I get it? Yeah. Uh, in my house. Well, out, outside my house. Oh, I don't okay. want you to think the house is overrun with ticks. No, I don't. <laughs> Uh, well, anyway, so now the show is a, a tremendous uh, success, and, and t tell people uh, about the program. It's, uh, it's people, uh, young people in, in California, and everybody works for uh, a Teen Vogue. 
Well, no, there's there's four girls on the show. They all work for Teen Vogue. No, two of us work for Teen Vogue. Well, what, we what, used what to. Teen we Vogue? don't anymore. Well, you don't Teen work, Vogue you don't, is a happened? magazine. You don't work for Teen Vogue anymore? Mm -mm, we what left. Happened? Well, I was an intern there for about two years, so it was time to leave. Yeah. Well, what do you do now? Now, um, I actually just got a new job with a uh, fashion PR firm, and it's a lot of fun. Good for you. Well, no, what will happen to Teen Vogue? The, they'll keep on going. We just won't work there anymore. Right. And, and is it, it's a special issue of Vogue magazine, but for teens, is that correct? Yes, it's just the teen version. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> All right. And, uh, and, and now, when I was a, a kid, me and my buddies would always say, well, you know, if they wanted to do a show, they ought to follow us around, because we were lunkheads. <laughs> uh, but that's kind of what happens here, isn't it? Yeah, they, I mean, <laughs> well, we're not You're lunkheads. You're not lunkheads. No, I'm, I was a lunkhead. No, I'm not saying that. Um, yeah, they follow us around like four or five days a week. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that fun? It must be fun, right? Um, not fun. I mean, it's not always fun. It's, we look at it as a job. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's not fun in the morning when you're trying to eat breakfast, but it kind of becomes a lifestyle, so you get used to it. Right. And is it is it uh, it's a reality show? It's yes, not it's a not show. not scripted, is it? It's scripted. Then now at the beginning of uh, uh, like when they show up at your house for breakfast, like you said. Yes. And that's when the show starts every day at your house. Well, you no, get... it's not like every day when well, we're no, waking I know, up. But today. you, you got to be ready because yeah. they're always yeah. And did they say okay today we want you to go? Uh, you're going to McDonald's for lunch, and then later you're gonna, <laughs> you know, you're gonna go uh, water skiing. I mean, no. did they do that? No, no, it's more like in the beginning of the week they'll say what are you doing this week, and mm -hmm. we have the days we work. I have a school schedule, right. and I'll be like, you know, every Tuesday I go you, to this you go class. To school, right? Mm -hmm. what, what school do you go to? I go to FIDM mm -hmm. in downtown LA. And and did, did they? But we don't see that on the show, do we? You do. You see the show? <laughs> they filmed a lot of it this season. I you couldn't understand why they wanted to film my computer class so badly yeah. because it didn't seem interesting. Yeah. But I actually have it with um, a girl named Stephanie, who's actually the sister of a guy I don't get along with on the show. Is that Spencer? Yes, yeah. his sister. Um, and, and what about Heidi? What, was Heidi your friend? Is she she still was your friend? my friend. Oh, you're not friends now? No. You're frenemies. We're, well, we're not. I don't really get that. <laughs> yes, we're frenemies. frenemies. Uh, I'm an idiot. I'm just an idiot. Just settle down. <laughs> Uh, but Heidi was your friend. She kind of came to the show with you. Yes, um, I met her in San Francisco. I went to college there for about a semester. Mm -hmm. Then she came and moved in with me and my family for the summer. And that was when you know they came up with the idea for the hills. They wanted to follow me, but I had originally planned to move there with her. And they said, you know, we want to film you having a new start. This is a spinoff. Right. It's a whole new group of people. And I said, I'm sorry, I cannot do this show without my best friend. And what did they say? Um, they said okay, and they included her. Oh, Looking back. You. Maybe not the best decision. Really? No. <laughs> be, 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 no that, that would suggest to me uh, uh, that that maybe you weren't that good of friends to begin with. Is that no? We were. We were, were, were best best friends. Were you, were you patch things up or not? Probably not. No. It's irreconcilable. Wow. At this point, yes. Yeah. And and who who is the the woman that was going to get married to Spencer? That's her. That's her. Yeah. Now, is she? Is, are they going to get married? I have no idea. You don't care, do you? And not really. Ah. <laughs> And, and Spencer seems, you like, you don't like Spencer. He, he seemed like kind of a newt to me, really. What's a newt? Uh, you know, in the Tick family. A newt, isn't a newt a reptile? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. M my bad. <laughs> <laughs> is that what they say on the hills, my, my bad? I don't, but but the, the show is like, every, everybody's like a big star. Everybody's on magazines and every, you have your own line of clothing. Is this from your own this line? Is from my yeah. Holy goodness, look at that. Well, um, <laughs> it's all working out great for you then, isn't it? I mean, it's been, this past year has been amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, the show has gotten a lot more popular, which comes with its downsides. What, which no, is no privacy, I guess, huh? No privacy. Yeah. We actually just all moved into a house, and now that we're on a public street, it's become mm -hmm. a problem. Every morning we walk out, um, there's paparazzi waiting outside our house. Mm -hmm. who caught me in Care Bear pajamas the other day. You've got to be awesome. careful. You've got to be very careful. <laughs> yep. when, yeah. Every time I leave my house, it's the same thing. Really? There he is! Get him! <laughs> uh, well, why don't you have your, uh, all, all, your, all your friends come to uh, uh, New York to visit uh, uh, me, Grandpa? Show to New York before? Yeah, no, but to, to visit me. Oh, Every, well, like we will spend the day with me. I can ask. <laughs> All right, we'll see what you can do. Okay. okay. Um, Mo Mondays at 10 p.m. on MTV. Lauren Conrad. Nice media, you Lauren. Too. Good luck Thank to you. you. Thank you very much for being here. We'll be right back with the kids, everybody.
Our next guests are a great rock and roll trio from England, and their current album is entitled Men's Needs, Women's Needs, Whatever. Please, please welcome the Cribs. Uh,